I think it's time for a little story. It's definitely story time. It became pretty obvious uh, throughout the first half of this year that this is a really, really good matchup with Flora and Troy. And originally we were supposed to wait until next year to make the big announcement because we wanted to, you know, keep things calm and then come up with that information next year. But a few weeks ago I started writing the credits for the DVD. And then there was the band section, Nightwish R, uh, the guys, then Troy Floor, how do I put this, you know, guest singer on this TV, no, sounds stupid, uh, so why not reveal it now, it's so obvious. Well, basically because <clears throat> she did her job really well from the beginning, and also the fact that she has been in this business since the 90s, so she already had a name, a voice and a face that you know, people can relate to. This DVD originally was supposed to include only the documentary part, and then we got a suggestion from the record label, Nuclear Blast, last June, I think it was, that uh, we need to include a live show into the DVD as well. And I wasn't that fond of the idea originally. I, I wanted it to be a mere documentary. But then, the more I thought about it, then I realized that, yeah, they have a point. It would make an even better release to have both. But I didn't want it to be called a live DVD with a bonus documentary. It needed to be 50-50. So that's where the title of Showtime Storytime came. I think that was the idea, to make the uh, crowd look a bit weird. Originally there were supposed to be zombies. That was a bit too far off. So we did some more photoshopping. It looks like a Nightwish cover. And that's how it should be, and yeah, I like it. Like I said, uh, the idea for the live recording came as late as last June, so we only had festival shows left, so mm -hmm. it needed to be one of those. The biggest. And Wacken was the biggest of the ones left, and they already had the filming equipment there, so for practical reasons also, it was the best choice. And the crowd looks really good. It doesn't have to be there, uh, but whenever we have a chance to do it, it's a lovely addition. But uh, we can definitely do shows without the pyros as well. But especially on big festivals, night time, you want to make a big spectacle. And with the music that we do, it really fits with the bombastic, dramatic sounds. Mm -hmm. But then again, we go to Texas and play for 400 people in a pub. We don't have anything, just four spotlights and it works there as well, so. Not a big fan yet. Maybe it's such a new thing that I haven't gotten used to it yet. But uh, the only really good 3D film I've seen so far is The Life of Pi. Um, every other film I thought it's been just annoying because the glasses that you wear really go deep into your nose and you get annoyed and you have to do it like this. So I still prefer the old school to be. The documentary was about 80% edited the last March, but then we got an email from Annette the previous singer that she wants to be cut out from the whole documentary. And, well, the band Ville wanted to respect her will and then we re-edited the whole documentary. <laughs> <laughs>
Yeah. Really, really. I do that as well every now and then. Headbang. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, I like big contrasts in music. Uh, I like the really heavy pound, and then I like the soft ballads and everything in between. Just as long as there is big drama and big sounds, and that you can physically feel the music. So many, so the very first show we did in Gibson Amphitheater in Los Angeles was just so good. It's a perfect start. Um, then of course the change of the vocalists went rather smoothly. That was, uh, that was good, the smoothness of it. Then the Wacken show of course the biggest audience we ever had. I turn to Werewolf once a month, go howling, do some really nasty stuff. Just what I am. That would be the next night of Shadow that I start writing songs to some of these days in the near future. I already started, yeah, I have about three, three and a half songs ready now. I read all the time, yes, I love reading. I think the last, the one I'm reading now is called The Ancestor's Tale by Richard Dawkins. It's just a book about evolutionary biology, a non-fiction book. That's a difficult one. I don't yeah. really follow art. I don't. It's not that I don't like, I just don't know. When I see a beautiful picture, I like it. I like to look at it. But, you know, I don't understand much what it's all about. So I wouldn't have a favorite painting. I don't know what's so special about Mona Lisa. <laughs> <laughs> Horror movie. Oh yeah, hold on. Uh, Sinister. I watched that about a week ago when I was in the studio. I think it had one of the best opening scenes of any film ever. It's really good. The ending was terrible. But uh, mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. three out of five. Mm -hmm. I like Ethan Hawke. And also watched Mama, which was terrible. Mm -hmm. no, Mama mm -hmm. by Guillermo del Toro. Oh, oh, I didn't see it. Oh, yeah. Such a bad I love Pan's Labyrinth. It's one of the best films ever, Pan's Labyrinth. And also Orphanage mm -hmm. is one of my all time favorite mm -hmm. horror films. But this, this was not very good. A lot of songwriting, a lot of rehearsing, arranging recording, mixing, so that the album is ready and finished um, until the next, uh, end of next year. Okay. So if everything goes according to the schedule, we should be looking at the springtime of 2015 release. Okay. So About a year and a half. We sure will. Oh yeah, with pleasure. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.